and not just why, but how will my product be better than other options on the market? The answer might first take form at a high-level view, with ideas like a superior experience, effective results, augmented features, more affordable, offering more value, but they must be translated into practical applications within the design. Whether you're designing a mobile application for your own company or have been hired to design one for someone else's venture, the process of competitor research and analysis and determining differentiators is the same. I've been discussing these efforts as if you will be doing them for your own company. As a hired designer, you can discuss with your client what sort of efforts they have made and would like to make, and determine just how much focus to put into creating differentiators for any particular project. Before moving into the wireframing phase, with the differentiators in mind, revisit the use case documentation and see where use cases can be improved, and in turn, identify which use cases include the key differentiators. You can then summarize that as a strategy in the differentiator section of the requirements document. This can help make sure that the team and stakeholders are all synced up on intentions as you move into the design wireframing phase. Before going into the wireframing phase, it's good to plan for usability testing to occur at various points in the life cycle of designing and developing the application. Through usability testing, the approaches taken in the designed experience are either validated or areas that need refinement are identified. The first appropriate point in the overall process to run usability testing is when a wireframe prototype is ready. The results can then be considered and solutions to any problems can be integrated into a second iteration of the wireframe. With a wireframe prototype, the testing can focus on the basic approaches taken to accomplish the use cases and the flows of the experience. A second appropriate place to run usability testing is at the end of the high fidelity visual design phase. The clickable prototype can be updated with the richer visuals that were created in that phase. The testing can focus on the same flows and processes that were previously tested, now extending to considering the visual hierarchy that has been designed to support those processes. I suggest you take a look at what it says about usability testing on the site usability.gov. The test can be developed using the user story and use case documentation as basis. And once you decide what you will test, a solid test plan can be created. This site also provides a decent guide on how to plan a usability test. Key performance indicators can also play a part in determining what to test. Key performance indicators also known as KPIs, are quantifiable metrics which help an organization define and track the progress towards its goals. KPIs created by stakeholders can play a role in deciding what to test. These KPIs include how a company benefits from users achieving their goals. For instance, will there be ads placed within content that users want to consume, or will the app sell something to users who need a product? Such KPIs are important to success, and their related experiences in the application will need to be tested. The nature of metrics for UX KPIs is largely qualitative. Information on human behavior and disposition is mostly gathered through interaction with users and is difficult to capture as statistics, but it provides insight into the gravity of given usability issues. 